welcome to another lesson where today we're going to learn how to play Twitch a little bit better. Now, as you may know, if you've been following the channel, I've been playing a lot of Twitch this patch. I have been playing a lot of Twitch. <laughs> and it, is, it has been quite enjoyable. Um, and I want to review this game. We, we had a tough start to today, but we fell into our groove uh, once we hopped into ranked. Thank, thank goodness that's how it worked. Sometimes it's the other way around. Um, and the reason I want to review this game uh, is because I got a couple times, Rengar just got me. I just was not playing around Rengar uh, properly. A couple of times, uh, I like just generally speaking, I don't do well dealing with a GP in the game because he always has global presence. I'm not good at tracking his ult. Um, and like his barrels, I keep screwing up the hitboxes on them and like getting caught just on the furthest edge. So that those are things I'm aware of that might be lessons coming out of this game. Also, Heimerdinger is just somebody I don't play against that often. So watching a replay where I can see how I fought into his turrets and times where I could get away with that and times I couldn't, I think will just help me be a better judge of how to deal with Heimers in general. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and review this game. We'll get this download started. And we'll go ahead and hop on into the game. So I'm not sure exactly what an overarching lesson is going to be for today, but I think those are the things we're going to be on the lookout for. I don't think there was too many instances where Rengar like ulted in and we just were way out of position. But a couple of the team fights were chaotic, and I know he jumped to us a couple of times. I think at least once or twice, he was not even ulting, he was just in a brush. And I just didn't respect the that I didn't know where he was on the map. <laughs> and he just like pounced out of the brush and just like slashed our throat. <laughs> so we that that's probably gonna be painful to watch happen to myself. <laughs> but I mean that's that's that might be a map awareness thing, a tracking Rengar thing. But I don't think that happens so much that it's going to be the lesson of the day. There's only one way to tell, and that's by having this replay system load up on up. So we'll see here. As soon as we can get in here. And also, I want to make sure you guys can see the drawn tool screen. I should have that fixed now to where you guys can actually see that all right. There we go. Let's get this turned on so I can actually see the summoner spells on our team. How about there we go? Turn that on. Now I can move it like this. Perfect. And now can you see this? Perfect. Oh my god, it's all working out perfectly today. Great. Okay. Start off here. Um our side's vision. Let's start. So once we have the ward thrown down there, I just rotate over to this side to give us a little bit better vision. Getting a little bit of choppy frames, so that might just be because we're skipping forward. Yeah, it looks okay. Well, it looks kind of choppy still, honestly. Hmm. We're we dropping frames. Hang on. No, we're not dropping frames. Okay, well, whatever. Hopefully that will go away momentarily once we get the replay a little bit more used to it. So seeing that ward down means we can take a bit more of a defensive position. Perfectly fine. Start out with the leash here. Is this the game that? Yeah, Zach actually didn't didn't last hit the blue buff. So we started with blue this game, and I don't really know how to use blue in lane as Twitch. So that's bad. I tried to give him a little bit more of a leash here. Uh, I missed the three melee minions to do that, but uh, I have such an XP lead from getting the blue. That I'm already level 2 early anyway. And like, uh, Alistair being able to hit level 2 from the solo XP from those three minions means we could all in right here, and I'm not sure that we did. So yeah, this is absolutely a missed opportunity right here. As soon as that happens, if we have a weird start like that, and I'm late to lane and my support isn't, 
That means both me and my support are going to hit two quickly and simultaneously before they will. So in that circumstance, we need to all in immediately. And we didn't here. We missed a major opportunity. One of the trying to do a little bit of harass here, but it's just not, it's just not enough. Um, and then I just, oh, that's another thing. This game, I was a magnet for those things. Oh my god, I couldn't sidestep a Morgana Q to save my life. The dark bindings, man. Oh, that was brutal. Brutal, this game. I need to, like, queue up against a Morgana bot and just practice dodging those, because, man, those had, like, heat seeker missiles. Technology today. So, see, like, this is the kind of all in trade we should have done immediately once we hit level 2. And now that they're level 2, they actually dealt with it a lot better. And look at that, we still won that trade. Handily, we won that trade. So I think missing that level 2 all in uh, was a definite missed opportunity there. And if, if, if it happens that we get the buff from the jungler, we have to do that. And again, we have a, um, a highlight video coming up. Where it's like when we got a red buff, because I think I think funnily enough it was another Zach uh, didn't didn't get the smite down, but we used the red buff because I know how to use red buff. I don't really know how to use this blue buff effectively in lane. Um, I played a little bit too far back there, I think. So I was thinking I had level three, so maybe if I dip just slightly out of vision, I can come right back in vision. Oh, man, come on, jump back, jump back for me. Yeah, the replay client's being a little being a little finicky with us here. Hold on, let's go ahead. Let's turn off Midori for the replay today. See if that helps us at all. Uh, Midori, you've served me well today, but alas. The quality of the replay is too much import. Yeah, it's good. Okay, let's try that. Hopefully that's a little better. Oh, much better. Much better. Okay. So right here, um, I guess this is okay to do, but he went in right as I did. So I'm a little slow to correct here. Maybe if I was a little bit faster, I could have opened up on Morgana sooner. And I think I actually have to flash E to finish her. Nice, I didn't actually realize I got her flash there too. Um, so we do wind up getting first blood out of like being able to play more aggressive because we had the blue. But we could have played that a little bit better. And again, Alistair goes in, and I'm not going in with him. Maybe that was another kill into Ezreal, or at least a significant chunk of damage. I might have been too preoccupied with getting an early back in, just to bank that gold advantage. And it's only a pickaxe boots. So maybe I should have stayed a little bit longer with Alistair and pressed the advantage. So we don't know where they are right now in the lane. We presume they backed, but they could be trying to bushwhack, so... I should be pathing a little bit behind the minions, which I am mostly doing my credit. Yeah, and Morgana was actually there, so wonderful. That was good. Good for keeping the ward coverage up, and we actually need to clear out a pink. They redrop another pink immediately, so whatever, that's fine. Okay, let's, let's review this whole sequence, because this was the first time I got surprise ring guard. <laughs> so let's actually jump all the way back here. Yeah, he was waiting in the brush with Morgana. So this was actually just really unfortunate for them. But they know we don't know he's there. And just this is just beautiful patience by Rengar. Beautiful patience. And if we had picked a fight there, that actually would have been great, because Rengar, who's in this bush, wouldn't have been able to react. It's it's not the best from our point of view, because we don't know where Rengar is, and like, he could be somewhere right here, so coming back in to pick a fight over Control Ward is silly. Him eating back isn't really a sign of anything. I'm positioning a little bit towards the brush, which I... I'm just trying to be on the opposite here. I think when I saw this motion, though, 
both of them group up like this and start advancing, I immediately start thinking, oh my god, where's Rengar? Is he six and like over here off screen somewhere about to ult in and try and kill me? Because this is like, they are positioning or they are pathing as aggressively as possible to get towards us right now. They're running just past the entire minion wave to get towards us. Ezreal already uses E, so this is as fast as he can move. And that's very scary to me. So I already know something's up. I'm not sure if it's going to continue here, so I start to position down this way. What might have been correct instead is to immediately start positioning this way. Because Morgana is going to go like this, and she still can't quite hit this line without clipping the minions here. So if I just immediately start backing like this, I can prolong the amount of time I have minion coverage from Morgana's binding and give Alistair a chance to like set up to zone in front of me instead of the more aggressive uh, position I take, which is probably understandable given that like I'm trying to press the advantage of an early kill and like a tier versus a pickaxe. But since he paths that way and I pass this way, this actually isolates me even harder. And as soon as I'm in here, and see the Rengar is here, I'm just toasted. That was a good Q and all to uh, like get in the brush, but unfortunately he was there, so there's no hope for me. Uh, maybe if I had thrown out the heal immediately once I saw Rengar was there, like I could have got a little bit further away. I probably still would have died, but there's no real, if I'm going to use heal there, there's no real reason to delay using it. So that probably was the right call. Um, I rush here as quickly as I can. Can't quite get the Ezreal, so I just pick up the control ward. GP ult is down. So now is the time for me to look for fights with Ezreal, if I'm going to. But of course, Ezreal is back. Go ahead and get that to times four. Just keep the wave froze uh, as much as possible. Because again, I'm aware of like, alright. Rengar 6, yeah, I just, how do I get hit by these, man? Uh, what am I doing wrong here? Shut down. I'm kind of positioning behind the wave, but at the same time, like, I'm not. I think, okay, I should be clear of the queue right here. And not have to walk any further into them. That's just, a one, miscalculation on this hitbox. But two, why do that? Why stand? Here, let's actually go back, right? As soon as I see this Q come out from Morgana... Because we have this ward, right? Boom. Even before then. Like... If I had, instead of just sitting here the whole time... If I had, like, gone this way... And let alone if I had started right here right and just gone the into the minions but i should even from here start pathing this way because either that minion's gonna block it or like it's gonna come and i'm gonna be in a poor spot and it might hit me so it's time to either start just backing this way and accept what my possible fate is or if i reacted a little bit sooner say when the binding came out like right here i could have pathed this way behind the minions Instead, I just sort of said, like, oh, I think I'm fine on that binding. And, whoops, go like this. Um, and, of course, I wasn't. And, like, she can bind into Bull, which procs her um, Thunderlords. And it's, like, she got so much value out of that this game. Like, I'm chunked a half off of that. And I, I like, have to go through a pot just to go back up. That time is a minion, so that's okay. Rengar got executed at blue. I actually didn't recall that happening. Um, so Pantheon was pinging that he was coming. Couldn't quite make it work. I opened up with the ult there. Maybe maybe I shouldn't ult in that situation because I kind of ulted just hoping it would work. As soon as the flash got committed, that's when I was like, alright, we're going for it. But he does have his E. He does have spell immunity from Morgana. So the Pantheon couldn't even follow up with stun. It might be best not to commit ults to there. 
We'll watch that cooldown and see if it mattered. Well, it might already matter here just immediately, right? If I had ulted here... Yeah, I wouldn't have had to flash there. I probably didn't anyways. That was probably too aggressive. That was maybe like me again doing the old like overcompensation thing because I felt like I had make a, made a mistake bottom. So I flashed to compensate. And that flash cooldown is definitely going to make a difference. So... Oh, and then I path into it. Yeah, that's just poor. Poor micro by me. I, I know better than that. And I, I, again, I path into it. What is, why am I doing this, man? What is this, like, never played against Morgana crap? <laughs> like... As telegraphed as can be. Look at this, right here. If I just walk this way, like, if this hitbox is secretly twice its size, right, Alistair still gets hit before I do, right? Why not just path this way? Instead, I path that way. The only way it could continue to hit me. Like, what? That's just absurd. What silly... And it's not like she's engaging off that one or even throwing the cooldown, so it's not as punishing as before. But it makes me burn through health pots. And, like, I wouldn't... I would have had those health pots if I didn't need it. If I didn't get hit by this, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It does, though. <laughs> In those situations, it doesn't matter, but... I need to be able to not get hit by Morg bindings. Because Morg is not that uncommon of a champion. And it's just a basic straight line skill shot, you know? Like, if I can dodge a blitz hook, I should be able to dodge a Morg Binding. Because Morg's missile speed on her Binding is way slower than the blitz missile speed on his hook. Again, the path into it, man. Like, okay. If I had committed to diving down... Let's pause as soon as this comes out. So I'm pathing around the pool, great. Looking for last hits, blah blah blah. Right after that comes out. So that's good by her, right? As soon as that minion goes down, that, like, maximizes it. But right here, okay, I have two options. I can. It looks like I was already starting to path this way. I can, can, can continue to path this way, or even cut this way a little bit to, like, get as much of a, um, like, whatever that's called. Oh, shoot. I loved math in school, too, and I can't remember... Um, perpendicular line uh, to this path as possible or I can path like this right if I path like this straight up against the wall and then down her, her Q is on cooldown right now so this is an okay time for us to go in now this call for minions or call for help from these minions that's unanswered is going to make us somewhat a favorable trade so we should go one of these paths in this general direction to disengage and not look for the fight but if we're going to commit to staying on this side, we should definitely, like, move out of the way. And instead, I kind of cut up. Like, you'll notice I went that way. Which isn't directly perpendicular. I need to be perpendicular to that. And then I wind up just going back and, like, accepting my fate. Luckily, that Ezreal Q didn't hit, but that would have been even more damage stacked on top. Like, that's half my HP thrown away just because I'm not pathing properly. I can't be throwing away half my HP like that as an EDC. That's just unacceptable. And Heimer still able to shove super hard into the game. So like in this situation, okay great, path this way, sort of letting Alistair do his tank thing. Great, he goes in. And we actually have support again. Great, that's a flash. Fine. And I turn back. Maybe I could have, like, turned back sooner and ulted. But we could have just left it well enough alone, you know? So we wind up burning a lot there. And we continue to dive instead of just waiting for the minions, but he does pull her back. So that's actually probably okay for New Zack to dive like that. That seemed insane to me when it first happened. And even when I was first seeing his replay just now, it seemed insane. 
But like Nuzak can actually like use his ult to like, get out a little bit. So that's probably okay. I think focusing this down first is still the right choice because it was so low. And now we can like turn on them and get them. Unfortunately, Heimer's still at ult and his new rocket. I think he levels rockets first now. And that's just insane. So I fought a little bit in the Heimer turrets. And then I don't know where Cam Rangar. So this is one of those instances. I mean How do I play around this, right? So I'm pathing. Right now, you already see it. I'm starting to path at an angle right here. Let's go a little bit forward. Again, still pathing at an angle. This was the path I traveled. Right? And then I actually go up, right? So I path all the way. And then at this point, Ezreal comes back like this to give vision of me. So then I have to like path a little bit away from Ezreal to create distance, which I actually don't have to do. I should just fight him to fight him. You know, we're both ranged, so there's no real kite ability here. But if instead I had pathed like this, Rengar wouldn't have been able to bushwhack me like this. And these are all danger brushes, right? When I don't already know where Rengar is, I have to assume every brush has this Rengar leap coming out of it, you know? And I just didn't. <laughs> and I just pathed wrong there. I pathed right into Rengar, so he just blew me up. And that's, that's punished for not respecting the Rengar presence in the game. So I may have been able to pick up a kill onto Ezreal there, and even transition that to having me present over and Ezreal absent from this Cloud Drake. So it's also um, not just a kill denial and a kill surrender, but also uh, it's making this Drake not capable until they can contest it at this point in the game. Which sure, I'm trying to create as much pressure bot now so we can safely do the Drake as possible, but again, it would be different if like Ezreal were down, you know? So looking to go in and catch out Hyma. So I open up with my E and spray and pray. Do I have any? I don't have any additional summoners. No, I do have flash right now. Oh, I remember this moment. So I have flash and I flashed into his other turrets. So this is really embarrassing. So this is the ulted turret right here for Hyma. But these things are still active for a little while. So instead of flashing from here to here, and then pathing towards his turrets directly, if I just flashed over here and then pathed away, I actually probably could have survived this, this ignite right here. But instead, that last little turret shot just does me in. And I became a piece of toast. So that was a poor flash. It was like a flash to save the kill for Heimer. So I think, honestly, these have been like positional micro mistakes, you know? I'm I'm going too close to bushes when there's a ringer in the game. I flash towards Heimer turrets. I like, I'm not pathing around more gamma cues properly, so I keep getting hit by bindings. Like all this micro positional stuff is stuff that has been what's been killing me so far this game. I think overall my play outside of that is not too shabby, but I'm good throwing in as soon as I have a stealth. I, I could be, I could stand the kite a little bit more towards him. Wound up working out. And since we're all here, no reason to fear Rengar, that's nice. Pick this up, get it pushing so we can get the Drake. Unfortunately, they're answering. I actually remember this moment in the game. For some reason, I had forgot that this turret was already down. And I was thinking, okay, we'll answer this turret with their turret. But this turret was actually already down. <laughs> so I try to overcompensate by getting this next turret. And I can't remember if they were able to punch me. No, Morgana just came. That was simple. See, that's how simple dodging those bindings should be, but... I was just having trouble in the laning phase for some silly reason. Good on us for staying in the brush as long as possible. 
to make him think that it was just Zack in there. And then we were able to go on him. Unfortunately, I think he actually makes it out here. Or does Zack get him at the end? Oh no, I'm able to just path through him and get the last couple autos in. Do throw out the heal, I believe, to keep Zack alive there. Grab that red. And head on out. I was looking to head out, but then they went in. So I just immediately come back and commit. And again, in between my old shots here, I'm not walking as much as I could. I'm mostly just standing in place and making sure that I get the most out of my attack speed. Oh, really, really good positioning on the barrel there. Let me keep an eye out for those barrels too. Yeah. I just walked right into those barrels. And I actually, I, I remember in game, I was thinking about auto attacking this, but I thought, well, wait, I should just run because he's either going to pop it right now or he isn't. But that's silly because I'm already right here on top of it. Let me just, if I had just auto attacked this, this chain would have stopped right here and I would have been fine. So that's another micro mistake of I should be pathing. And, and then like, again, good barrel placement. He actually forces a flash out of Britain. So I'm not the only one, but that doesn't excuse it. I, I should be pathing around the barrels or if I get driven into one and then suddenly I'm on top of it, I need to auto attack it immediately. Unless if the chain's already coming, I will kill it first. So uh, another just like micro mistake there. Oh god, and then I just walk right into some barrels as soon as I get back. This kind of goes back to the previous thing where it's like, play like you're fragile, and I'm playing EDC. Look at this. I just run into him like, hey, you can't see me, so this is probably fine. And he wasn't even aiming for me. He was aiming for Alistair. But he chunks me. And then now he sees me. He's like, oh, shit, well, that twitch is going down. And Alistair has to headbutt defensively just to save me. So I'm running to try and follow up because they're committing really hard to fight on him. And I just sit on top of my team when Rengar ults. Which is probably the right call. I hung out long enough to get some life steal back up. And now I'm opening up with my ult. Again, I'm when I'm ulting, I just don't move. I tend to just stand still and try and like get the max value out of my attack speed, but I need to be able to move. It's not a channel ultimate, and I need to abuse that, right? So sure, here's a great moment. Okay, I did get stunned there, to be fair to me. Okay, I guess that's fine then. Definitely, definitely I'm going to keep an eye out for the rest of the video for, or the rest of the replay for moments where I didn't micro during my ultimate, but that time I think we can forgive me. That time I was stunned. <laughs> At this point, I don't have much life steal aside from the Doran's Blade, but I do have some health pots on me. And I do have the Doran's Blade, so it's not nothing. Since there's uh, still a lot of time before the Drake, I focus on just trying to get to mid as quickly as possible. We see them, so we immediately back up. Playing it nice and safe, nice and slow. Stand over here to look for a stealth in. But when he positions that aggressively towards here, I actually am not sure if he sees us and was looking for poke on me with a barrel or not. <laughs> so I backed off a little bit, but then like this is a nice point blank. He, he just gets toasted there. So just too aggressive positioning, and I guess that means it wasn't worded after all. A little delayed on the engage here for me. So I was trying to use the stealth again for max value. Can't really... Uh, we can't really find an opportunity to poke that down, and then Morgana just lands a nice binding and knocks down our squishy. Now with the bring our ult down, we look to engage. And Zack actually goes in pretty far before I do. So let's let's review this, right? Let's wait, come back over here. Okay, great. So it seems like at this point, okay, maybe we're going to disengage. If I see Zack, I wasn't even channeling my Q there. So I should have, like, hung out right in the corner of this brush 
if I went in it at all. And then if I immediately pathed out as soon as the jump started, I could probably be right here right now. It's about like two or three Teemos ahead of myself. And I actually flash to just cover that much distance to make sure that I can start unloading with my ultimate as quickly as possible. And again, you notice in this game, I think I'm the one who got Morgana bound. Yeah. Well, once again, I'm getting hit by the Morgana binding. I do like that I attack moves, so in situations like this, I just am perfectly automatically switching targets. Yeah, and I was stunned and then slowed, so. Not too bad, actually, in the grand scheme of things on not microing during that, but I probably could have stood to micro a little bit during that. Like, move, attack, move, move, attack, move, move, attack, move, move, attack, move. Just to be a little bit more efficient with moving, advancing, or retreating my positioning. Oh, uh, this feels nice to farm with Runons this Twitch. Um, but again, I think, I guess I'm actually not that upset with myself, after all. Because I, I'm not having as much trouble as I thought it This might have been a poor choice. We maybe should have gone to the team because this Drake is just an ocean Drake. It's not that important. It certainly does help, but it's not the most important Drake. And like, we gave up a really big window to them for some free damage on an inhibitor turret. And like, two kills. So that's pretty bad. Probably not worth an ocean Drake. To be honest. And Brand actually flashes for that. Couldn't quite make it work. Rotating over down here because it looks like uh, the fight's breaking out. I like my pathing. I almost path this way to get to the minion wave. But I path more aggressively because the fight's breaking out. I do go to the minions first because I'm trying to rally them to this turret as quickly as possible. Because this is like so deep. Like... They gotta get out of there. I think it's right to focus the turret in this situation. And there's enough of a tankiness in Zac and Pantheon that they can get out until I can come in. And I open up the bolt. Uh, did I really want to move in that team fight? Where would I have path if I was microing a little bit better? Let's see. So watch when I open up with my ults here. Okay, right here. It's one shot. I do a little micro there to throw out my E. Mm, I could have packed a little bit more this way. Maybe could have got an extra shot onto Ezreal there. Not the biggest deal in the world. I didn't quite get the kill on Heimer. Maybe if I attack move there, I'm not sure if I attack move John Dalheimer there. But I'm not actually that upset with my position in fight. This is bad. This is real bad. This is sad, bad, sad, sad, bad. Um, Rengar is the one who's left up, so I should leave. I know better than that. If Rengar is alive, I'm ADC, I need to get out of there. <laughs> Another, that one's more of a macro mistake, um, to be honest, but... If I had just left, I would have been fine, and we would have wa wasted the ring or ult. So great, GP's down, which means we should be able to open up on this. And we do. Great, we're zoning so we can get this before they even can contest. We look to fight, we won for one at the start. Won't analyze it that much since it seems like it's already over. I keep hearing the render ult, but I'm in the middle of my team, and I think that's where I need to be when I hear that ult. Just go, especially to my tanky members, just go and stand around them. So I go catch this wave. And back to base. Good. Good, good, good. I'm happy with that. Then we have Baron, so I leave the charge right down mid to start with the easy outer turret. Knock that down pretty quick. We have a pretty good amount of physical damage people, so... This is actually really good map awareness on my part. I was actually... I'm really proud that I had noticed this in-game. Um, seeing her start to clear this, 
I said, okay, well, I see Morg over here, like, clearing out wards and stuff. So now's the time to push in. But then the fight breaks out. And it looks like we're trying to disengage, right? So I say, okay, well, Morg is going to come join. So I'm actually going to go over here. And as soon as Morg paths the way she has to, especially if she starts pathing this way, which it looks like what she was going to do, I'm just going to all in her. And I'm just going to immediately take her out of the fight. And sure, she's not the most important for the team, but she is going like Zonia's Morg. And like, sure, she'll still be able to cast Redemption, but that is one person down. And sure, we lose Brand at the start, but that already makes this a one for one just because I had path like that. And then I come back in and when I re-enter, I actually do a good amount of consistent damage. I think I had pretty much, yeah, I used a QSS there because I was screwed and just did. Let's re let's re-examine that last little bit of the micro here. So I'm coming in. Open up. Am I able to get the last little bit of damage? I don't think I have any like bursts from Shiv or anything. No, not this game. So that's me like attack moving, and I think I hit that instead of hitting that. I'm a little too close once Rengar's here. So I start to path back. Start to try and move. But I think I actually auto-attack that. Once, so that's bad. Maybe I was trying to move or attack move. Gotta be careful with attack moving in a situation like that. So I think I QSS to panic because I wasn't moving that much because I clicked on the turret from Heimer. A little bit wasted on the QSS, and while he's stunned, I missed a lot of time. I'm sure I was in my Q stealth, but probably could have gotten some free damage on there. Good job on waiting until the poison was off them before looking for damage on the turret. Bad job on letting the barrels just pop me. And sure I have GA, but I don't want to take half my health uh, when I wasn't even at full to begin with. So, lucky that that didn't grab me, otherwise I probably would have had my GA down there. And Pantheon with the hero play, I'm able to follow it up with my own flash. Good play once we were in that kind of bad situation, but if I had played that better from the start, maybe we could have gotten a little bit more there. Play out the ward on my way to Drake. Life steal up a little bit. Seems good. Also, counter jungle. You know. Never bad to do that. Just starve them out as much as possible. I probably could have done that a little bit more today, to be honest. Uh, when we were pushing that deep counter jungle on my way out. Should probably focus on that a bit more. I don't, I don't think I did it that much this game either. And it just accelerates my build and like delays them even harder. It's, it's very, very important. And I'm just not really doing it. You're grabbing the red. I don't think I needed that QSS. Oh no, I did. I, I got hit by Morg Binding, but like there was not really any follow-up. And I just used QSS for the sake of using it here. Like, if I'd use it immediately, okay, fine, I cancel out most of the route. But I actually wait until it's, like, halfway done. And now I'm just down a QSS. So we're in full retreat. I'm looking to wrap around. A little late to the party here. But I do get to open up in a pretty straight line here. And I'm nice and far back from my team. Let's see Rengar coming. Okay, again, this is the moment where it's like the standing still and just like in attack move without actually moving at all. It seems weird, but if I kited through Rengar at all, where Rengar was coming, I would have actually dodged the entire Heimer turret or Heimer missiles because this is like the cone that they hit. So if I had moved this way, this huge chunk of health you're seeing missing is actually all Heimerdinger. None of that is Rengar. So I should have just walked through this way, knowing we can kill Rengar as a team, as soon as I saw these missiles start coming in. Instead, I just stood there and took it, and I barely survived. And sure, I had GA on top of that, but that's, that's me not moving while I'm in my ult. And if I'm losing all that HP, it's very important for me to actually start moving in my ult. Good on me for looking to do a little counter jungling on my way out. I was looking that time more for life stealing back up though. I need to keep 
keep that in my mind to actually counter jungle and not just to life steal. Which good on me for doing it at all. But you know. Thank you to Zach for letting me get some of that camp so I could hit my item break. Come back to lane here. Looking to go in as hard as I can. I actually pop the ghost blade to make sure I can keep up with them. Great. He does E away. I need to switch targets onto GP a little bit faster perhaps, and I might not have needed to ult, but it's alright. It's fine. We get the kill so we can go ahead and come right up to Baron. Take Baron down again. Ezreal's Hail Mary, unfortunately for them, doesn't work. And, okay, so I rotated top after that, because top was pushing in, and it was right there. And, like, you know, maybe Bran should have rotated up there, because he has teleport, and he has teleport up. <laughs> but I think getting the side wave pushing as well is really important, especially since bot is, like, going to push in, but it's going to slow push. So we pretty much have decent control over this side of the map. We obviously, as a team, have good control here because we're pushing in with Baron. Escorting the minions in this way, though, really disjoints me from my team, and they know I'm disjointed. So it gives them an opportunity to fight. It looks like we were the ones that actually started the fight, but nonetheless, like, a fight breaks out without me there. And sure, this one happened to go well for us. And we were probably ahead enough to where I could get away with doing that kind of split. But this is very risky, and I need to not do this kind of split if my team isn't, like, ridiculously ahead. So, I think that was a risky play. I didn't really take that... Walking into barrels again. I didn't take that into account when I made the call. Good flash to finish him off. Finish up that inhibitor and just leave. See, there you go. That's that's a time I could have countered jungles right there. On my way to the Elder here. Unfortunately, with the back, you gotta be careful here. We find a good opportunity to open up. Let's actually review this again, right? Again, watching to see how I micro once I start ulting. So good, I stay in the brush to make sure they don't see me. And they're like, oh, Alistair's trying to be a hero, but we can deal with Alistair. No surprise, it's not just Alistair. I mean, I wasn't auto-attacking a lot during that fight because I was already out of range. So maybe if I had been in better range at the very start and, like, kited to stay with him, I would have got more of my ult out and we wouldn't have to fight a contest on this. I actually didn't ult during that fight, it looks like. So I throw my cast first to make sure I can um, pop his uh, spell shield so Alistair can do his thing nice and safe. And then again, I'm not microing, right? I just stay in here and take all his rockets. And this time, it takes a little while, but... Inevitably, it does cost me my GA. If I just micro down and stutter step forward a little bit, I would have been able to um, save my GA there. Which, in that team fight, didn't matter. But in a closer game, having my GA up would totally make the difference. So, I I could be a little bit could be a little bit better at the micro of the uh, team fights, um, the micro in lane, just micro in general, honestly. So come, come back to me, come back to my base. Um, whether it was dodging a Morgana binding or like not walking on top of a GP barrel <laughs> or whether it was um, like not pathing around bushes when we don't know where Rengar is, I think I just could have done better at microing in general this game. And of course, the last thing, the thing that we kept harping on towards the end was uh, actually moving while we're ulting to make sure we're not like being misfortune, you know? <laughs> which is fine, which is really strong. He's basically as strong as misfortune's ult, possibly even more, to be honest. Um, but it's not a channel's ability, so I shouldn't treat it like one, you know? Um, 
All of those are microing things. Uh, micro and macro. I'm sure you, are, you as gamers understand what those mean in terms of gaming, the macro positional things about the map and the meta game and item builds, micro, the actual micromanagement of how I'm moving during conflicts. Um, so those micromanagement aspects, I think I could have done a lot better of this game. There was a plethora of different ones. We named four right there. Um, so I, I think we could have done those a little bit better. I think that's something I need to work on. And I'm not sure as much if there's a way I can change my drill every day to try and get my drills working, but you know, we'll, we'll see if we can make that work out. Um, I'm sure there's a way we can try and drill on that. Um, I'll look into see, seeing if there are any drills that other people do for microing. Um, perhaps when we're just last hitting, we can try and constantly stutter step a little bit more. Um, stuff like that. We'll see how we can practice that. But if you know somebody who is a little bit bad at the micro aspects of League of Legends, particularly in AD carry, um, some of this video, hopefully they can learn vicariously through my mistakes this game. Um, this was certainly a game that would have been much more easily won if I weren't making those errors. So uh, hopefully in seeing that they will avoid making the same mistakes themselves. And if you are the person watching this video who got some advantage, who has vicariously learned through my mistakes, so you are going to be a better player. Great, that's the point of these videos. I'm glad to be helping you. I hope that the rest of these videos will also be helpful to you. And woohoo, we're back to goal four, yay, woo, awesome, I'll see you guys next video, where hopefully we will still be in goal four, hopefully we don't just keep dropping out of goal four as soon as we get there. <laughs> I'll see you guys next episode.